My name is George Estreich, and I wrote a book called The Shape of the Eye. It's a book about raising a daughter with Down syndrome. That's my younger daughter, Laura. Laura was born in 2001, and she had Down syndrome, but she was in a very unusual situation. Most people with Down syndrome uh, are either diagnosed in utero or um, immediately at birth. This is because people with Down syndrome have, have very typical features, and they tend not to, to look like their parents in the way that we expect. Laura was missing some typical features, and there's a really important lesson there in uh, variation that people with Down syndrome vary and are not the same. And there's the fact that my mother is Japanese. As you may know, people with Down syndrome have tend to have almond-shaped eyes. Because of all that, Laura couldn't be diagnosed at birth. It took two weeks to find out, and that's when our real journey began. My wife and I wanted to understand what did it mean to have a daughter with a disability? What does it mean to have a daughter with a visible disability? What would she be able to do? What did it mean for our family? This was a difficult time, and I have to say that as someone who teaches college English, as someone who loves libraries and believes in looking things up, that I made things much, much worse by looking up everything I possibly could on the internet. If you try and learn about Down syndrome, from standard sources, what you will see is a gigantic long list of mostly problems. That list um, is technically true, but true for no individual. One of the things I had to think about, and I think this happens for just about every parent of a child with a, a recognizable described disability, is, is the question of what is normal. And to recognize how pervasive that concept is in our daily life, in our in our humor, in our medicine, in our every thought, and at the same time how undefined. That idea of normal had to become a lot less important to me. And I had to recognize that it was more important to me than I would have liked to admit. I was thinking a lot about my dad when Laura was first born. He he had died some years before. And he had been diagnosed with cancer at just about the same time we learned my wife was pregnant with our first daughter. And so that experience obviously was, was very intense because at the same time, you know, we were anticipating the birth of our, um, our first daughter. I was also anticipating the death of my father from stage four lung cancer. And after Laura was born, it, it seemed to me oddly parallel that we had this wonderful news of a child, a new child, accompanied by what seemed to me bad news of, of Down syndrome um, and more specifically of heart disease, which Laura had. It was Teresa, who was my wife, who said, cancer is bad news, Down syndrome is only heart. That has always stayed with me. I put it in the book because it's important to understand that Down syndrome is not a disease. For Laura, Down syndrome, it's her way of being human. It's not human with asterisk, it's not human and less. In my experience, I felt that my parenting skills were not adequate to the task. That even though I raised one daughter who was then five, that everything I learned, everything I learned how to do was, was inapplicable. It, I'd have to start completely over. That was partly true, but it was mostly not true. I mean, kids are kids. They have 46 chromosomes, they have 47 chromosomes, they're still human. It's not like raising a child and, you know, a different animal or something. So, because of that, the things that you have learned, the values you have, are useful. I would say find people that you trust, and if there's medical involvement, which there may be, there may not be, that means the doctors that you trust, and the people that you trust to just let you go through whatever you're going through and have that be okay. For people who are friends, family members, my advice is to refrain from giving advice. Less advice was better and just being able to have a normal conversation or have someone like bring over some food, that was really helpful. So Laura right now, she'll be starting her seventh grade in a couple of weeks. And um, we always tried from the beginning to have her do as many activities as she could. Some of those were, were and have continued to be, quote, special or meant for kids with disabilities, and that's fine. To the extent possible, we try and not care too much about that line between special and not special. So one thing we've done is to, to search out those activities where it's just not a big deal for her 
to be her. Most recently, actually, she's been doing 4-H, where she was helping take care of an alpaca and showed the alpaca at the Benton County Fair and actually won a bunch of ribbons. So we're really proud of her for that. Another is that she there's a program called Girls on the Run, where she's uh, run a 5K for the last uh, three years. Those activities are out there. A lot of the journey of being a parent is finding out which of the ones are really are welcoming and then having your kid just be out there and do that. My long focus is no special world waiting for her at 21. So 21 years old when the services drop out, the school system is not a part of things anymore. She's just going to be living in the United States. There's not a whole separate grocery store and all the rest of it for her. So the more that she's involved out and about in the world, the more she's used to it and people are used to her, I think the better it will be.